Hello and welcome. As the Tokyo Olympics winds up, it's now time for some introspection. For the second straight games, India's women athletes were winning medals for our country. First, we had Mirabai Chanu. She kicked off our medal hall at Tokyo, lifting the spirits of the entire delegation with her big silver win. Then we had boxer Borgohan and our shuttler Sindhu. All of them then going on to seal medals for India. Seven of India's last 11 medals, including Saina Nehwal and MC Mary Kom at the London 2012 and PV Sindhu and Sakshi Malik at the Rio 2016 Olympics, have all been won by women. And while India celebrates, it is important to put our women's athletes' victories in context. In context in a world of sport that is largely dominated by men in India. Tonight on We The People, we want to celebrate our athletes who have won despite an uneven playing field. On our show tonight, we are honoured to have, we'll have Bhavani Devi, first uh, Indian Olympic fencer. She'll be joining us from Tokyo. Nisha Millet, first Indian swimmer to qualify for swimming in the Olympics. The only woman in the uh, 2000 Sydney Olympic swim team for India. We'll have uh, Nikhat Zareen, a junior world boxing champion. Jyoti and Bharat, former Indian footballer, now coach and trainer, current uh, Delhi state champion. Shagun Chaudhary, the first woman to represent uh, India at the Olympics in uh, shotgun. John Gloucester, ex Indian team physio, Rajasthan Royals head physio, medical coordinator, and uh, Sumitra Nair, captain of the under 18 women's rugby team. Uh, I want to start first with uh, Nisha Millet. Nisha, we've come uh, a long way from Kalam Maheshwari in the Sydney uh, 2000 Olympics. Indian women are winning, but it is a path that's filled with challenges and societal prejudices. Yes, definitely. I think uh, being a girl growing up in the 90s, uh, we've had every ridiculous comment being thrown at us. One from, you know, don't become a swimmer, you'll get too tanned, which I find the most ridiculous of a lot. <laughs> you know, when I go out of the country, people love the tan. You know, they pay a lot of money to get tanned like we do. And I never really bothered about things like that. Uh, to also people mentioning that, you know, sports isn't a great career option. Uh, you know, my own mom-in-law at one point had said, why don't you become a, a teacher in a school instead of running your own academy? So I think it's more about, you know, uh, the public not knowing or understanding what sports can give to your life, first of all. Apart from the money angle, the fact that, you know, teamwork, dedication, time management skills, leadership skills. If you see even our hockey team, they may not have come back with a, a bronze medal, but they won over the half of the country. Uh, you know, they really showed that, you know, teamwork can, uh, you know, get a team to beat an Australian team uh, in, a, in a crucial final. You had some of the girls from that uh, team where, you know, even after performing so well, uh, their families are being uh, called names and, you know, the people are telling them, uh, you know, it, it, because you're a Dalit, you know, maybe somebody else should have taken your place, maybe then you would have got some medal. So I can't understand how people can be this uh, ignorant and uh, uh, the fact that if any athlete who even makes it to the Olympics should be lauded. And yes, sometimes the performance isn't up to par. It happens with everyone. It's a Neeraj Chopra rival, right? The German guy who was the world record holder. And everyone thought he would come, uh, you know, would be in the medal tally or probably win the gold. He didn't even make it to the final. So let's not chastise our athletes. Let's figure out ways to get more women into the sport. Because as you can see, right now it's the women leading the way. If you look even at our medal tally, if you look at the last Olympics where there are only female medalists, there is a, a change happening for sure. But it has to happen at the grassroots level. We need to get a lot more girls, young girls, and across uh, the level, you know. Not just from the affluent families, from the middle class families, from Absolutely. even the smaller villages. Like uh, if you heard Tamilji Singh say, uh, she said, uh, the only reason I was in athletics is because otherwise I would have to be married off. I didn't want to be married off. I decided, no, that's not my life. I was passionate about sports. I took to it and she came sixth at the Olympics in the district. So if she can do it, you know, I think sports can open so many more doors. Yeah. Yeah, you're, so that's you're something right. parents need to be educated about. So I'm glad you guys are covering this because it's the most important topic if you ask. Uh, Nisha, you're right that more medals have been coming from women, but that's not in swimming somehow, right? Why is it that, that we don't have more women in swimming winning despite the infrastructure uh, being the same for the boys and the girls? So we've been having this conversation amongst the swimming fraternity. And what we figured out is, even as a coach myself who runs an academy, we see a huge drop-off when the girls reach their 10th grade 
and as they get into the eleventh and twelfth, and the parents have to parents and the daughters together have to sit and decide: Do I want to pursue swimming as a career, or do I want to quit? So what happens is if they don't see any big medal by the time these kids are fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, they tend to think: Okay, let them just go and be an engineer or take up another professional course. That's where we're losing them, and uh, that's very sad because if you look at all the top swimmers nowadays, especially. The ages are getting older and older. You're winning medals in their twenties, late twenties, early thirties, even. But so you're saying then that if the child was a boy and had not delivered any medals by that age, fifteen or whatever, the parents' response would have been different. Because with the men, they're offered jobs with the railways and police, and not so with the women. So we've been pushing for that as well. Uh, like you saw, uh, even Neeraj Chopra has. Jo, I mean, all the top athletes actually uh, have been offered jobs. In swimming, unfortunately, very few. There's only the railways and the police who offer jobs to swimmers. And typically, you wouldn't hear of a, a female, you know, uh, wanting to get into the police too often. Uh, we've been trying to change that fight for women. So we have one woman swimmer, I think, who right now is being supported by the police, but absolutely no one in terms of the railways. So we need to have that where at least if they have that, uh, you know, steady income coming in, they can pursue that. Whereas all the top male swimmers have jobs with either one. Fascinating, interesting. Uh, Shagun Chaudhary, the first woman to represent India at the Olympics in uh, short run. Uh, Shagun, the opportunities for women have opened up in the last uh, decade. A woman in shooting, uh, shooting still considered a male-centric sport. You know, we have to understand that we come from India, as we all know, is a patriarchal society. Yeah. So the fact that There are certain norms as far as women are concerned, and uh, how they ought to be. And sports is not something that's ingrained in our uh, DNA. So, if a woman actually goes into and plays sports, it's something out of the ordinary. Also, um, uh, what we also have to see, what I was seeing with Alti Ghosh, is that her mom was uh, the caddy, which was very hard thing to see, because it also it's like a protective layer that you're. Bringing to your child, right? Yeah. So you're you're helping her do her best in an environment that is conducive to her, which yeah. a lot of which Indian women in sports do not come across that easily. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, we talk about uh, sports being a uh, very uh, we talk about the average career graph of of the sports person being very short. It's mm. actually shorter for a woman. Because women have these expectations from society where they have to get married at a certain age, they have to have kids at a certain age, and uh, so how do they pursue sports? Yeah. So in order to defy the norm of society and then to go ahead and do what they do is absolutely commendable. So, uh, and that is why if you've seen like the journey of the sports girls who are doing what they're doing in India, it is actually uh, absolutely amazing. Considering that they have uh, beat the system of uh, uh, the typical Indian mentality and gone ahead to bring laurels to the country, and it's a misconception where we see that uh, uh, male athletes are uh, better equipped than female athletes. I mean, look at my own sport. I'm not saying that we are that that. Uh, that Women are superior or anything, but at least treat us as equals. Give give the opportunity, give all of that in order to perform our best, and I think that's what's very important. I mean, I was I've been reading articles about uh, Naomi Osaka and Biles, and mental health became a huge issue where which has not been addressed for decades, but it yeah. is something that girls face much more. As far as men are, because uh, a sporting field is not something that uh, an Indian girl would naturally go to. Mm. So if she actually goes there, then she has to fight a lot more battles, and while fighting those battles, and then perform. So I, it is. I mean, looking at the current Olympics, I have been awed. There have been times that I literally have been teary eyed with all these girls performing. because they have done that despite the odds absolutely and mental health issues can really drain your energy and play with your focus i can imagine and that could make that you know all the difference that 1 mm or 1 second difference between a gold and a and a silver but um you seem uh, when you say that 
things aren't given equally to male players and female players. Could you expand on that? I mean, do you have experiences of how a woman athlete has had to fight not just to win against an opponent but also the entire system, a system that seems tilted against you? There have been so many, I could write a book. <laughs> so, uh, uh, being the one of the first uh, women to actually go into play with the shooting, it was, you know, women have to, have to uh, strike way harder than men in order to make their mark, in order to be taken seriously. I yeah. remember the times where uh, the better cartridges were uh, stored only for the uh, men's team. Oh, God. And the women's team were not allowed to uh, touch that bit. And uh, better slots of trading were given because the mindset was that, that you were anyway not going to perform. So why do we have to give you the best? And it was very disheartening for an athlete to actually go through that. Like I said, I can write a book because there will be too many. And whether it is, uh, you know, women in the workplace are objectified. Uh, the sports arena is no different. And in order to uh, get past that and then perform, has uh, I mean, it takes a lot of courage, a lot of determination, and you have to... It's literally proving the world wrong. And this Olympics, I think, will set the path for the next games and the games after that. And it would also be an incentive for parents to put their daughters in an environment where they would like them to excel. You've been so candid. Thank you. And of course, we bow to athletes, women athletes like you who've been working, playing, fighting, uh, you know, in this uh, ecosystem where uh, we just don't have uh, a larger narrative of support. Have things changed? Let's go across to Jyoti Bharat. She is an athlete in uh, today's world in uh, 2020. Jyoti, you've been part of the women's Nike India campaign. You're a Nike athlete. You know, that ad when it came out, it went viral. Possibly also because it was the first sporting advertisement focusing on women, ironically. Jyoti, you've, uh, you're a striker for the Indian women's football team. You were. From the outside, it may look like you've beaten the system. Uh, but you see women athletes even today affected by a wider sexism, wider gender biases that exist? Yeah, I mean, for sure, definitely. Um, I think... Uh, a lady getting through and making it in the world of sport, uh, she's faced a lot, uh, a couple of more hurdles than a, a, a male athlete would have along the way. I think a male athlete uh, definitely has the hurdles of facilities, good coaches, um, definitely to some extent of financial backing. There are some people I'm sure uh, would, that would, family members that would tell a male athlete that, you know, this is not a, a lucrative career to follow. But for women, it's that along with um, others that are not there for men, for example, uh, you know, women just don't, are not seen as people who play sport, number one. And you're sort of an outlier by even playing sport in the first place. Uh, secondly, you know, the pressures of uh, appearance. So like women who play sport get tanned, you, you know, you're, you're, you obviously put on muscle to some extent. And, and that goes against the stereotypical look that a lady uh, mm -hmm. should have, you know, that comes in, in the way as well. And then a lot of families, you know, they can't, they don't want to send their, their, uh, their daughters and away to train, you know, elsewhere. Uh, so they have a problem with sending the girls out. Boys can go, that's okay. Sometimes training times are late. So again, who suffers? The women won't go because the men can go out late, women can't. Uh, travel, uh, you know, stuff like that. It's just, it's the normal hurdles mixed with a lot. So when a, when a female athlete actually makes it in the Olympics like they have, it's phenomenal. So, you know, I asked Shagun this, um, because again, I feel like you're speaking from experience. There seems to be the sense of, uh, you know, you've been affected badly personally by this. Do you have personal instances too? Yeah, so luckily I didn't have the thing of a family problem. So my family was supportive. I think that was what worked in my favor, but definitely the other hurdles of, you know, um, just lack of facilities, lack of training, lack of opportunities. Uh, for example, you know, I'll give you a very current example. 
uh, with COVID, with the third wave supposedly around the corner, uh, you know, the men's football schedule for our calendar for the year has come out and they've mm-hmm. got their, you know, their usual tournaments and it seems like the federation is working around COVID to still let them play. But for some reason, when the women's tournaments were discussed, they said uh, COVID, the third wave is around the corner, so we don't want to like come out with any any uh, dates, which is <laughs> like, it's highly sexist. How are the men playing during the time of COVID and how are the women not, you know, being protected? So it's, it's small things. And as, as an athlete, you know, you just want to play. That's all literally. And for someone like me, I... So it's not even I have you know I'm a trainer on the side so for me maybe the financial element was removed but apart from that just wanting to play a sport is it seems to be impossible it's as hard. an athlete you, you just you, want like, to go play out of your way to kind of play it shouldn't be the case we're talking about uh, the male uh, footballers schedule I mean it's a question of priorities it seems in the end you know there's a there's a BBC survey that's uh, that was out this week that said uh, that many Indians really believe that there are certain sports that are just unsuitable for women and we have Nikhat Zareen she's the junior world champion in one of these sports we're talking about uh, boxing that Nikhat the many in India feel uh, is just unsuitable uh, for women young women like you did you face feedback like that Yes, definitely. Uh, we women has to face a lot of uh, things, uh, not even from uh, family, society, not even in sports. But I think that we have to face women athletes ko, uh, physically and mentally bhi pressure milta hai society ke taraf se because people think that, you know, uh, such as uh, sports like uh, boxing, they think that it's a mardon wala game, it's a manly sport. And, you know, if women, women play and... Uh, you know, they will spoil their face and who will marry them. So and so questions comes to, you know, to them. And I think, uh, I think that's not correct because uh, we women are equally strong as men. I believe that there is a lot of change since 2012 London, London Olympics. And uh, because after, uh, you know, uh, even in 2003 Olympics, Sindhu and Sakshi Malik won the medal. Uh, there were no other athletes who won medal. So I think that was a you know great change uh, in our society. People started taking it seriously for women athletes. So I think it's a good change. And uh, we dekh sakte abhi recently Olympics maybe first uh, medal was won by you know women only, Meera Bai Chanu, and everyone was so proud ki ek ladki ne medal jeeta hai. So yeah, I think uh, in future people gonna you know support women athletes more and people will not think like uh, ki, ko sports mein kyu dal rahe? they can't even you know uh, they are not strong as men so I think this thinking should be stopped and you know they should start supporting women you know you uh, mentioned it obviously affected you when you were told that your you could you know disfigure your face break your nose I'm guessing whatever um, that I read somewhere that was your mom who said that she was concerned about that yeah, I, I mean, I belong from an orthodox society uh, where people think that, you know, men, uh, women are only supposed to be at home and they, can, they should just marry and, you know, uh, bas ghar, ghar, uh, hai. so that's the only work. But uh, my father being a, uh, into sport, he, he being a uh, sports person, so he supported me throughout, you know, my career and uh, and I feel lucky to have a father like him. But yeah, uh, you know, belonging from an orthodox society, people st- still think that, ki, you know, ki, are ye ladki hai, boxing is a game where uh, you know, she lagta hai, she'll spoil her face and who will marry her. But yeah, uh, now people started thinking that uh, you know, uh, you know, she's winning medal for our country and they, ta- uh, they started you know, supporting me. But there are still few people who are still not happy me being with uh, me doing boxing. But I don't focus on such people who not support me. I focus on only you know myself and on my work. You know which push me to do uh, more good at my uh, career, uh, my sport. And uh, I you know I am working hard and in future I'll definitely you know prove all the critics wrong that you know no uh, women can also do boxing 
Absolutely, we're sure you will and may we all have supportive parents like you all have had and we need to do a show on the parents who have been the rocks of Gibraltar behind all of these athletes, all of our athletes at the Olympics. We have Bhavani Devi who is uh, joining us from Tokyo. She is our first Indian Olympic fencer and she kicked off by winning uh, that first game at the Olympics. Bhavani, I know you've tweeted saying you're sorry uh, you didn't win a medal in the end. Believe me, you do have no reason to be sorry because the simple pure fact that you are a fencer in a country that's you know so cricket crazy and John Gloucester we'll I'll come to you uh, talking about that but uh, uh, Bhavani to you first uh, how do you feel I know that you you you're obviously disappointed that you lost uh, lost the medal but just tell us about a bit about the challenges you've had to face and you know competing in a in a sport uh, that really isn't that well known uh, in in India. Yeah, thank you. So yes, uh, I had a lot of challenges, especially for me. Uh, you know, every athlete need all kind of support. It's not only about financial. It's not only about the facilities. Because at elite level, when you have to win, you need this mental strength. You know, yeah. even the games like Olympic Games or Asian Games, where all the like all the nation watch this competition. They they think there are only one competition, which is Olympics and Asian Games. So it's a, it's a lot of pressure when an athlete competes at this big tournament. But for me, you know, fencing, when I started fencing, no one knew about the sport called fencing and that exists in India. So earlier, I also did not get much result, but I had a very strong dream to represent our country at the Olympic Games. I started traveling alone from uh, 16 years. So with the aim of representing our country at the Olympic Games and my parents allowed me, they, they also believed that I could, you know, I will achieve this dream one day. But the problem uh, or the challenges that I received from outside is about being a woman. Everyone asked me like, why are you doing fencing? For what? For what you are doing this sport? So I say like, you know, I want to go for India. Uh, I mean, go for Olympics. I want to win medal for India. Okay, then do you think it, it is possible in fencing? So it's the, you know the major problem is the uh, same fencing people had asked me this. I was so sad like you know people from the same family are asking me this and telling me to choose some other option. And I understand that you know it is difficult for an Indian to achieve a bigger uh, you know bigger competition in a sport like fencing. But for me the most important thing is to try. Also my parents told me like don't think about the result just give you one hundred percent effort. If it's if you are talented and if you work hard, you will get there one day. So that what uh, that's what I believed in and that's what I focused on my entire career. But uh, I I started receiving uh, you know the sponsorship or the support only from last five years. Mm. But uh, I was uh, you know already started this journey fifteen years, sixteen years ago. So uh, from la for, uh, for the first ten years, it was very difficult oh, to okay. arrange financially to travel for competitions. And the more also the important other important problem I had is lack of knowledge about the sport. Because I, I want to share one incident. So uh, when uh, the first Youth Olympic Games happened in Singapore, okay. so I went for the uh, Junior World Championship, Cadet Junior World Championship in Jordan, 2010. So there, top 16, who goes to top 16, qualify for uh, Youth Olympic Games. So I reached top 32. So I was just one round away from, uh, you know, qualifying sure. for the Youth Olympic Games. And uh, I lost that match 14-15 against one, uh, one fencer. So one point, I lost by one point and then I was very sad. I did not have my coach. So we had one coach. So it's just insurmountable. The kind there. of odds our athletes uh, are up against and the kind of lack yeah. of experience that you have. Yeah. Thank you, yes. Bhavani. I want to bring in um, yes, Mr. Gloucester problem, in John yeah. Gloucester. Uh, only because I'm running out of time. I would love to have uh, you, Bhavani Devi, back on. Uh, but John Gloucester, put this into context for us. Because at the same time, we read about internationally in the US, for example, women are fighting for equal pay for their uh, w women footballers and here in India the BBC survey says that 42% of responders felt that women's sport was not as entertaining as men and you know the main culprit there would be the IPL and cricket because they're completely uh, cr cricket crazy. Where do you stand on this? Well first of all congratulations to all our athletes who did so well in Tokyo particularly the girls over there. Um, and look, we've got to go back and look, I think the tide is turning and I think the World Tennis Federation has shown us that uh, equal pay for the elite athletes, both male and female, has uh, sort of given us an insight into the fact that the work effort that goes behind 
every athlete is the same, whether you're male or female. The journey often is harder for the female athlete than it is for the male athlete, and they should be rewarded accordingly. That's the way I see it, and I think fortunately for us, the, the tennis world has shown the way, and I'm hoping that all the other uh, leagues uh, uh, will do the same. Cricket is uh, is certainly following suit. Um, not equal pay as yet, but I think in time they will be uh, far better rewarded. But let's look beyond cricket now and let's start supporting the other sports uh, financially, but also with, with facilities, services, support services, etc. cetera. Um, and I think, you know, the now was hit on the, on the head before where uh, I think it was Nisha that says, let's turn this, let's turn this funnel upside down and start putting more and more of our kids into the bottom of our sports pyramids. Let's get more and more kids being physically educated, physically literate, with greater motor competence. So then we have more female athletes, educated athletes coming out the top of our pyramid who can support the country and, and get medals for India. So I think we've got to go back to grassroots again. And that's where the change of mindset, that's where the whole change of the idea of a, a female being competitive in sport uh, starts. And the biggest um, component of that is probably the parents. And we've talked about that also. So we need to educate the parents about what are the positive opportunities for all our females and this, uh, female athletes in this country and what a fantastic life can be for them, both within the sport but also outside the sport when they retire. And so a long, long way to go, but I hope that the past two weeks, uh, the medal halls that we've seen uh, from the Tokyo Olympics brings in a new era of Indian talent and women athletes get the support they need. We need to value and encourage and empower uh, our athletes much, much more. Thank you all for your time and bringing and sharing all of your personal experiences uh, with us tonight. We thank you for your time.